Welcome to the channel. This is City Dad Farming. All right, so today we're gonna to be working on a 2005 Chevy Tahoe. I'm gonna be showing you how to do a brake replacement on the rear pads. First thing you're gonna to wanna to do is get the jack underneath the rear axle and support the car slightly by the jack. Just raise it off the ground just enough. Anytime you use your air tools, you wanna to make sure you put a couple drops of the pneumatic oil into the, keep it nice and lubed. The tools for today's job is you're gonna need a wrench to take the bolts off. Gonna need the C-clamp to squeeze the caliper. Should always have a jack stand for safety. You need the correct size socket to take the caliper off. And then a pair of pliers to help you squeeze the caliper back into place. Next, you'll need to take the hub cap off to expose the lugs that are actually holding the tire. Next step is to remove the lugs. In no particular order, you just need to take them all off and put them aside because you'll need them to put back on once the tire is ready to go back on the vehicle. Now you can remove the tire and just push it off to the side. With the wheel out of the way, the caliper is now exposed and you'll have to take these bolts out to remove the caliper these from the rotor. Have to come out. Those two right there, and that will release the caliper. A little WD-40 to help loosen those up. Just a little squirt on each. Try not to spray yourself in the eyes. Did that once already. <laughs> so you get it on there, give it a couple of taps. That's it. Once it starts to move, now what I would do is I would start to loosen the bottom one before I take the top one completely out. Just Okay, we're going to be using CarQuest pads today. Looks like we got some semi-metallic pads. Direct replacement. And there's the little warning sensor. So when the pad wears down enough, that little sensor right there will start to scrape against the cal the rotor. And that's where you'll hear the squealing from the brakes. It's telling you it's time to replace the pads before it gets to the metal to metal. And so once the bolts are out, now you wanna flip that up where it's resting on the top. You gotta be careful not to kink the hose that the brake fluid goes through. Thanks. So now you can see the difference. See, right here. This was totally worn down that the sensor was actually squealing, but the pad itself was basically all but gone. So that's where your squealing was coming from, was this side right here. See, we're doing just pad replacements right now. So now he's gonna use the old pad to compress the caliper. Before you compress the caliper, you wanna come over here and you wanna open up the cap for the brakes so that the pressure has a way to escape when you're squeezing that caliper. So the fluid will come back up as you're squeezing the caliper. And if the cap is on this, it'll make it harder. So with the cap off, it just relieves the pressure. Obviously the new pad is a lot thicker than the old one. And so you need room for these calipers to go back in. 
those two right there, you see how far out they are? Basically, you have to squeeze that all the way until it's nice and flush. And that will give you just enough room to get the new pads on. If you don't get it completely down, you'll go to put that cowl, you'll go to put it back on and the caliper won't fit on the rotor. You get the C-clamp in the middle of the two pistons and now you just tighten that C-clamp down. This is our new C-clamp that we've just acquired recently. We used to just use pliers and squeeze it as hard as we could with our hands. But now we have air tools and C-clamps. It's a lot easier than using the pliers. <laughs> I think that's, that's about it. That's about it. So now that you could now you can see it's flush. Those pistons are all the way pushed back into the caliper, which is what you need. Otherwise you won't have the clearance to get the pad onto the rotor. If and when you do want to replace rotors, these two little clips right here, this clip here and this clip here, that's all that's holding the rotor on at this point. When you put the tire on, the bolts will hold it in place, but for right now, it's just a little stay. And so if you wanna change this, you just take those two little clips off and then this thing will just slide off. Okay, so you see now it's nice and flush. Those pistons are down and the rubber gaskets aren't pinched up or anything like that. Now you're ready to put the new pad on there. And so the pad is gonna clip right into the, each clip on each side. So that's one. Nice. Same thing, just gonna clip in. And they do sell this anti-squeal grease that if you are using the anti-squeal grease, it goes on this side over here. Cause what'll squeal is this right here. This will chatter sometimes and that will make a squealing noise. Now that you see it slid on nice and easy, you know that you had that caliper pushed in, the pistons on the caliper pushed in properly. These are the bolts that came out. 18 millimeter in our application. All right, let's see, the sure it's lined up. So they should go in by hand nice and easy to a certain point. Then you get the other one by hand on the bottom. Once it turned by hand, now you can go back to your 18 millimeter socket and snug them down. Now you can use the mallet to break them loose, but I normally don't use the mallet to tighten it. I'll just tighten it as hard as I can by hand so that the next time I go to take them off, I just need to bang them a little bit with the mallet to get them off. 20,000 miles you should get out of a set of brake pads. At least the way we drive. Grandpa probably gets 30,000. Yeah, you think? He's a lot easier on the brakes than me. I, I ain't that on the brakes. See, so now that the calipers have been pushed all the way back in, you can see we're back full on the brake fluid. We won't be needing to add any. It was only low because the fluid was pushed into the lines and in the caliper. And now that the caliper has been compressed, now the fluid is pushed back in to the brake reservoir. Now that the reservoir is back where you want it, put your cap back on, 
So that's got to be in place. Go ahead and tighten them both up. Caliper's back in place. We're ready to reassemble the tire. And because you didn't jack it up that high, it'll be a lot easier to get the tire on. And though, even though we're using air tools, you should always put those lugs on by hand. You always want to start the threads by hand. Because if you try to zap it with the air tool and it cross threads, then you'll be really upset. You'll have to take everything apart again and then replace that stripped out lug. See how the lug is tapered right here? So that's got to go into the groove here. And that's why you got to make sure that before you tighten it, that you have all the lugs where they need to be. Because what will happen is if you have that off centered a little bit, the tire will wobble and you'll have a high speed wobble on the tire when you're going 60 miles an hour down the highway. You see how each one is sitting into the groove. Now it's ready to be torqued down and tightened. Now whenever you're doing a tire, you do an alternating pattern. thing you should do is just take your hand wrench and just make sure that it's torqued down tightly. And this, when you're doing this, you can go around. Yeah, don't mind. Mm -hmm. when, when you're doing the final tightening, you could just go straight around to make sure you don't miss one. It's when you're doing the initial tightening that you want to make sure that you do the crisscross pattern so that the tire gets seated on properly. Put the cap back on. And just like that, you'll be stopping. Now it's on. The last thing you have to do is before you start the vehicle, you want to get inside and then you're going to pump the brakes to set the pads. You push it all the way down, let it all the way up. Do that like three or four times. And as you do it, the brake pedal will get harder and harder. The first time it'll be real soft. Second time it'll get a little better. The third time. And now it should feel like it's right where you want it to be. And that's go. how we change the brakes go. on a Chevy Tahoe. And since you have the air tools out, it's a good time to check your air pressures. Make sure that you're where you're supposed to be. On all cars, it's always going to be somewhere inside the door jam or on the inside of the door. It will tell you what your pressures are supposed to be. So the rear size rim size and it's saying 32 psi 32. 32 and that pressure is always a cold pressure which means you don't want to drive the car around and then check the tire pressure you want to do it in the morning or when you after the car has been sitting because heat will expand that pressure and then as it settles it gets to the cold pressure setting and then that's what you want to set it at cold pressure 
So that brings us to the end of another video. If you like what you saw, make sure to give us a big thumbs up. And don't forget to tap that subscribe button to join our family. I'd like to thank you again for watching. See you in the next one.